Well, hi, hello, and a warm welcome to this video where I'm gonna be talking about how to start your own Facebook group as an artist. Of course, running a Facebook group is not gonna be for all of you at all, and I totally understand that, but for some of you, this could be the perfect business and marketing strategy. If you teach art, or you coach art, or you do art therapy, or you do art services, you run art services, or you want to share regular studio updates, then potentially having a Facebook group could be the perfect thing for you. So in this week's video, I'm gonna just walk you through the simple steps that you need, things to consider for putting together your Facebook group. But don't forget to stay right to the end because I'm gonna share a couple of secrets that's gonna save you a whole load of time. And if you're new to my channel, then I'm really happy to have you here, super welcome. If you love the content all about building your art business, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. Okay, so as we dive into this topic of Facebook groups for artists, we have a few things to think about before we make that decision and go ahead and set up the Facebook group. The first thing to consider is who is your audience, all right? You need to have a clear understanding of your audience. And obviously the audience ideally needs to be already hanging out on Facebook. If you're not sure about Facebook, this is the first video you're watching, don't forget to check out this one, which is Facebook Top Tips for Artists. That will give you a bigger picture overview of Facebook and how you can use it as an artist. It also gives you a few clues as to what you want to be thinking about in terms of your ideal audience. The second thing you want to think about is why would they join your group? What's gonna be in it for them? Because there's no point in you thinking, oh, I know, I'd like to do this, I'll set up a group. You've gotta be thinking about your audience, your potential customer first. Otherwise, you'll set up a group and no one's gonna to want to join and that's not what you want. Third thing you wanna think about is what sort of content could you actually put into your group? So if you're really struggling to think about content, then maybe Facebook is not, the Facebook group's not gonna be for you. I need to let you know this is going to be a little bit of work, but if it could be a core marketing strategy for you and a way to grow your list and grow your audience, um, then obviously it's a really good thing to consider. And by the end of this video, I hope you'll be clear whether having a Facebook group is gonna be right for you. And then number four, how are you gonna manage it? So if you're already really tight for time and you're thinking, I really haven't got hours in the day to be doing extra marketing things, having a Facebook group's not gonna be for you. So you need to think about it. How are you gonna do it? Could you spare up a little bit of time a day or have you got somebody that could actually, once you've set it up, could manage it and run it for you? Don't forget you can have admins and moderators and people in that group who can spend the time helping you out during the day. So you could set it up and, and do the big picture planning and arrange the content and you could have other people doing the sort of day-to-day -day labor inside the group. So think about how you're gonna do that. All right, so after those things to consider, we've given some rough answers. You don't need to commit right now, by the way. I'm gonna run you through how to set up the group and at the end of the video, you can make the decision, is having a Facebook group really for me or not? All right, so on Facebook, it's fairly easy to find the create. There's create in various different places. You can create all the different sorts of things, but we're gonna go ahead and press the create button, create a group. And then right there, it's gonna want a name. And the name is really important. So you want to make sure that you name your group something that's what we call keyword friendly. So I often use the example of um, <laughs> courses that are watercolors for beginners. So perhaps you are that artist and you teach courses and you teach a lot of watercolor. Make sure your group has got the word watercolor in it. So that's, it's a, that would be a key word. So my Facebook group for you guys is business for artists. All right, so we've got two keywords in there. Business, who is it for? Artists. So I want you to really think, don't just open up the group and give it some long, complicated title. When somebody is looking for to groups to join, you wanna make sure that your group title stands out and they're thinking, oh, that's exactly what I need. So number one, create the group and give it a really good title. Number two, but like the page, there is of course a header image. So use something like Canva to create a nicely branded, clear header image that lets people know again, what is the group and that they're in the right place. So you know when we add things to our favorites and then we're like, okay, I'm going back in that group, it needs to re-remind them and refocus them. This is the group, this is what it's about, um, and this is why you're here. So you put all of that into your header image. Number three, you've got to give the group some description. Now, initially that about can be quite short and simple, but it's got to be clear because that about section shows up when people are searching for groups. 
So it needs to be very clear in the first sentence what your group is about and who it's for. And then after that, you can just again, pad it out what sort of content you're gonna be sharing in the group. And you can also include a link as to where they can find out more about you or what you're doing. So keep it short and sweet, but keep it very focused on what the group is about and what the uh, group members are going to receive. All right, number four, you can gonna set up three questions. So within the settings of the group, and it all looks very similar. So if you're used to using Facebook, you will easily recognize the navigation. You've got all your different settings and all your different tabs down the left-hand side, and you've got the little menu bar across the top underneath your image, and you've got the feed. You've got all the usual things that you have on a page or in an event or just on Facebook generally. So down the left hand side, you will see a variety of um, tabs to set things up, one of which is going to be questions, member questions. So click on that and here you can set up three questions. And this is your opportunity to find out a little bit more about your members. So I like to make sure also that these are real people. So I'll ask questions and choose the writing box rather than a tick. So you might say, how long have you been an artist? Great, okay, you get an idea now whether they're a beginner or whether they're further down the line. You might then, in your second question, like to invite them to where they can join your mailing list or get a free resource on your website or find out more about you on your um, artist page somewhere. So you can do something like that on the second question. And on the third question, you could just say, you know, so if you're, if for example, we're doing the watercolor for beginners and I'm a watercolor artist and I run workshops, what's your biggest challenge um, with watercolor painting? And they might say brushes, knowing where to start. It gives you some um, information to help you with what you're going to create with your content further down the line. Number five, step number five, you need to invite some initial friends. Now this is why in my previous videos about Facebook and links below, it's really important to build up your friend base because you can invite friends into the group. Now, caveat here, you want to make sure that if you go down that list to invite friends, and it's easily done on your phone, by the way, um, go to your group and invite, and you've got the tab to invite friends. Make sure they're people who want to be in that group, okay? Don't just go down your friend list like that because they won't thank you for it. So make sure you look and you think, oh yeah, that person, that person fits my sort of profile. I think they might like to go in this group. They don't have to accept it. They might look and go, oh yeah, okay, that's great actually, just what I need. Or, nah, not really, not, not, don't wanna do that and they'll decline. So you wanna start inviting people because you want to get your group going, all right? So number six, you want to put an engaging first post. So that's gonna be an introduction post. You know, where are you from? What do you, what's you work in? You post a picture of the latest thing you've done or whatever's relevant to you. But make it, make it simple, pin it to the top of your group so that every time people come in, they see that welcome post and they'll leave their welcome information. And then of course from there, it's going to be about that posting strategy. It's gonna be about putting content in on a regular basis, getting the group going, and of course doing things to grow the group further down the line as well. Now at this point, you're thinking to yourself, oh, this is perfect, this is exactly what I need. Or you're thinking, Nah, I understand it all, but it's actually not really what I need to be doing right now. I need to let you know, final thoughts, right? It is going to take your time to manage. A well-managed Facebook group does take some time. Now, here's where I'd like to share with you that tip that can just help you with that. So one of the things that we find challenging usually is content creation, all right? So what I'd like you to do to make your group a bit easier to manage is to come up with some post ideas and schedule them all ahead of time. So that you're not thinking, oh my goodness me, I need to post something in the group or I need to kind of get this thing going. You can put your post together and then you can use, use the schedule button and you can just schedule them. And this saves you huge amounts of time. So you could plan out your month ahead and you could think, okay, I want this conversation going. I'm gonna share this little tip or resource. I'm gonna schedule a live for my members. I'm gonna ask this question. I'm gonna post a, an inspirational quote or whatever the different things are. You create those posts and you click schedule and you schedule them out for the month. And that is just a huge time saver. And from then on, it's about management. And like I said earlier, you could of course enlist help, get people to help you inside the group. So once you're setting it up, it's a little bit of time to set up, but once you're done, you should be able to manage it. 
But the thing you don't want to be doing is setting it up and walking away. We've all been there and I, you know, trust me, it's not easy to get it back up again. So make sure if you're in, you're all the way in. I wish you lots of success. If you've got questions about Facebook groups, post them in the comment below as I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.